This is Abe Friedhanser from CinemaDailyUS.com, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Ali E. Carvalho today about her role in the film Crush. How are you? I'm so good. How are you today? Good, good. What attracted you to this film and to this role? Well, first, I obviously read the script, and I really enjoyed reading a queer coming-of-age teen rom-com that didn't center around a coming-out story. That felt really important to me. Um, and then I also learned that our writers, Chris and King and Casey Rackham, are also queer. And suddenly, all of the jokes that I had read, the Gen Z humor that was so on the nose, and like it just all made sense suddenly because there was representation in the writers' room. <laughs> and I just knew that I, I couldn't wait to lend, couldn't wait to lend my hat to AJ. That's great. And what are some of your favorite romantic comedies from growing up? Ooh, to be honest, I don't have very many references. Like I've never watched When Harry Met Sally or any of the other ones. That's my mom's favorite. But I've never watched them because I, I didn't grow up with a TV. So I read a lot of books. So I know a lot of like the tropes. And I was also a, an, I'm an only child. So I just kind of like read books and then reenacted them to myself. I just talked to myself a lot. So <laughs> I don't have a lot of uh, references, but I, I do know the tropes quite well. Do you think that this film incorporates those tropes in the same way with all this representation or does that change inherently because of the nature of the characters? I think, I think this is a really fresh take on a rom-com, to be honest. I think our humor is very of the times and also very queer and vibrant in that way. Um, I think there's kind of like the slow burn. I think there's, of course, the love triangle. There is also almost almost an enemies to lovers kind of thing going on between Paige and AJ, where they're just like two very intelligent young women. And AJ is co-captain of the track team and Paige is not a good runner. So like I like they're both trying to get something out of each other. And it's fun to see them like tease and prod and then slowly but surely like that's hot. So they start liking each other. <laughs> Do you think that you're more like Paige or more like AJ? Hmm, that's a good question. I, oh, I'd have to split it up. I, I love AJ for the fact that she plays things close to her chest and is, is honest, but also like, kind of like plays it kind of understated, you know, whereas but I also relate more so to Paige because I'm awkward AF. Like if I like someone, they're gonna know just by looking at my face. And I feel like um, Rowan did a wonderful job of her acting in that sense is that like with Paige, like her heart is on her sleeve. So I, I'd have to say both. That's fair. And a lot of your past projects have featured one of your talents, which is your singing voice. But this one turns to something which is more, you know, sort of uh, traditionally artistic, which has to do with with art and all that. Is that something that was uh, did you miss not having the singing here? I did not miss. not. I did not miss not sing or singing. I did not miss singing. I I'm grateful for my God-given voice, but also it was really nice to, to not have to worry about a song in a movie because that sometimes gets stressful. However, to flip it on its head, I then had to practice running because I'm a runner, I'm a track star in this movie and <laughs> I'm not great at it. <laughs> so I practiced running. I also um, took some skateboarding lessons and learned how to skateboard. I like learned how to drop in on a ramp. I fell a lot. And that also seemed, little did I know, very important. Because for me, for Auli'i, like, that bruised my pride. Like, my ego did not enjoy falling, didn't enjoy falling in public, didn't enjoy going to a skate park where all the other people there were way better than me. Um, but I also felt like it was important for AJ. And that that's who she is. Like she's used to failing and getting up again. And that's um, that hardened resolve is inspiring.
Yeah. And you mentioned that you're an only child, but in this film, you're a twin. What was it like to, to work with Isabella and to portray that here? Uh, Isabella Ferreira is so incredibly talented and she plays Gabriella, um, AJ's sister, and she really is just like seemingly perfect to AJ and like has no difficulty making friends. It's just like she glows and everyone just loves her. And when Gabby came out, like everyone suddenly knew and like made a deal about it. Um, versus when AJ came out, it was like, oh, okay. And like moved on. So very different um, public reactions for the sisters. And so there's like a little bit of maybe resentment, but it's also like, that's kind of sisterly love and, and knowing your strengths and being co-captains on the team means that they're like, they work well together. You know what I mean? So it was lovely working with Isabella and, um, and I, I hope to work with her again because our scenes were, were really funny. And then we also have a scene where we finally get to kind of connect and talk about what it means to have the perfect sister for AJ to have the perfect sister. And she does such a good job of listening that you can feel really like the heart and the connection between the two of them. Like those sisters may fight. They also love so hard. Yeah. I think also the tone of this film is very much like AJ's coming out when it comes to attitude towards, you know, queer romance and just identity that it's just something that's sort of assumed and no one has any problem with it. I think that is really nice to see. Do you think that there's a lot out there like this or is this film sort of like the start of something new? Oh, I love that. I think, I think that this is a really beautiful, fresh take on a rom-com. I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. And to, again, have our film not center on coming out. It is simply a part of them, that they are queer. And, and if you don't know that people are gay, like, people are gay. <laughs> like, and our humor and, um, and like, the, how quick and easy it can be to have these conversations like it's not a taboo subject that is very real and very like this is how it happens in real life especially in high school for for this generation like it's timely and so i think a lot of our rom-coms of course come from a, a later decade and this is what it means to to be in love now and love looks different now because well we finally see it on screen Gay people always existed. We're just seeing them more so on screen now. Yeah, that's great. And you mentioned the humor and anyone who watches this film will see immediately that there are a lot of puns involved from like the very start. Are you good at coming up with puns in your own life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I, I love puns. <laughs> like I'm a nerd in that sense. Do you have a desire to do more comedy like this, romantic or not? Yeah, actually, I, 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 this is kind of the first comedic role that I got to take. And um, my next film, actually, it's called Darby Harper Wants You to Know, is also comedic in nature. And I was so happy to tap into that side because it's freeing, you know, like to have people laugh at you is, is such a compliment. Yeah. And you started your career relatively recently with your voice work in Moana. What has the transition been like to live action? And do you still feel a pull towards animation and voiceover work? I love animation and voiceover work. Um, and I'm still working on that, actually. I'm working on Haley's On It, and that's for Disney as well. So they're very different mediums, um, voiceover versus live action. In voiceover, I love I love being a storyteller and I love getting to forget what my face is doing and just put all of my emotion in my voice. Like it, it just puts me in a happy spot. Um, but for live action and acting, like that's a challenge for me. And, and oftentimes I feel like the most challenging part is doing less, you know, like not all of the emotion needs to play on my face because that's not how we live. And so getting as close to real life is what I'm trying to do with my acting. So I love them both. Please don't make me choose. I won't. I won't. So what, what else besides the project you mentioned, what else do you have coming up? 
Um, I have The Power, which is um, coming out soon on Amazon. It is about by, it is an adaptation of the book written by Naomi Alderman, where suddenly uh, teens and young women are able to electrocute people at will and manipulate energy. And so it explores that power, but also how power structures change when women have a strength over the opposite sex, which is very interesting. Great. And Booked is there and any blessed. Booked and blessed. <laughs> is there anything that you're really excited to do sometime in the future that you haven't had a chance to yet? Oh, gosh. I mean, I'm very lucky and I hope to continue acting much longer for, for longer years. Um, and I hope to get into more physical roles. I was very pleased to play AJ and to actually like be running on track and to like, yeah, that physical exertion like really excited me um, and getting into that physicality. So I hope to continue more of that. Darby Harper Wants You to Know was a project that I also got to do harness work in. So I'm slowly but surely transitioning into, into characters that, that like use their body and use their powers. It's very fun. <laughs> That's great. Uh, this film premieres on Hulu on Friday, April 29th. For more great content like this, subscribe to the Cinema Daily US YouTube channel. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. It was a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Subscribe. <laughs>